Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, whether you're new or you've been with me since the beginning. I have so many new subscribers and viewers and I'm so happy to have all of you. Today I'm going to be making a little tiny notebook to carry around in my purse. And I started it and then I thought, well, I'll turn on the camera and show you guys. And what I'm showing you here is the size of the paper. And I got this paper at that art and craft supply swap that I made a video about the haul of where all the supplies were free. So I have quite a bit of paper cut to this seven by eight inch size. I don't know if the donor or the organizers cut it that way, but I, I like the ledger paper. I think it's fun. And I had a little notebook, which I'll show you later in my purse that is full. So I want a new one. So I've already paper clipped the signature together. That's the papers that I'm going to fold over and sew in. And then I took my, I don't know how to say it right, all and poked holes in it. You could use an ice pick or whatever you have. Then this gorgeous paper, it's just a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that I've been carrying around forever that I love. And it has a little bit of texture. I was surprised I didn't pick a blue cover. I'm sure some of you are, but I really liked it. And then I added tape to the inside and tape to the outside for strength. And the one for out to the outside is also for appearance. And what I'm doing is unrolling the large washi tape that I got at Daiso. I showed that to you in my haul. And just trying to, I'm going to put it across the spine of it to add some strength and also some beauty. The last one I hauled around in my purse I got it at the Embellish Online Play All Day event, and that was in March, and I hauled it around in my purse until about November. So the life of this item needs to be pretty long. So I'll show you what I'm doing to help with that. A, I used a really thick piece of scrapbook paper, like a cardstock, a printed cardstock, and then I'm putting this washi on the outside. You'll notice. I didn't get the full length of the washi until I watched this video. I couldn't figure out why it was crooked when I was done, but see on the roll, there's about a quarter of an inch where I missed. So anytime you're using that wide washi and trying to do a nice project like this, pay attention. It's so thin and it tears so easy that I didn't realize that I missed it. I didn't tear it clean, but I tore it enough to fold it over on the inside, got it a little short there. And I think what I'll probably do is put a liner over the inside. This moment probably would have been a really good time to put another nice piece of paper on the inside and just glue it over to cover all of that up and add strength. In the end, it's a pretty stiff notebook because the signature's thick and there I had a piece of washi. See, that was probably the beginning of another tear. It's pretty thick and so maybe had I added another piece that would have been too much. This is a trash to treasure project essentially for me. It's a free journal paper, a piece of cardstock I've been carrying around for uh, I don't know but I would not be surprised if it's like 10 years. I just thought okay I'm gonna go with it. We'll put it together. I have a bunch of books partially assembled. I've done a fabric cover. I've done a paint pour in cover. I, I really have a lot of books I want to put together. Okay. There's the tape. The reason it's green is, I don't know. It's from like Canada or somewhere. It's essentially masking tape or blue painters tape is what we have in the U S. There are many, many videos about book making and sewing your signatures into a book. I actually had you know, an old fashioned book set off to the side at one point during this video. So that's why I slowed down when I was sewing to look to the side here. I'm trying to get my holes lined up. So I just took my pin from my art glitter glue and put it in that hole. And then uh, I'm punching the others. And I got a little bit off the fold, but I think it turned out fine. My husband says I'm never so happy as when I'm making lists. I always have to have a notebook in my purse. I know we have phones, right? I can type notes in them all day long, but I am a butterfly. If you are familiar with Cassandra or clutterbug.com or her channel, 
and butterflies have to see it. So if I type it in my phone and it's a to-do list, if it doesn't pop up on the calendar or if I don't see it in my purse, it is not getting done. And my brain is always full of craft projects and things I need to do and errands. You wouldn't know it by the name of my channel, but I do work full time. So sometimes in a meeting, I think of something else and I need to write it down. I just really like to have notebooks with me. For my various notebooks that I'm going to be putting together, I'm going to put some to go in my purse, some for art journals. I, I have one that I've started too that's what you call a flow journal. It is, I have too much great stuff for journal paper and art journaling and collaging and layering and beautiful printed. So I'm putting together one to do some kind of giveaway with. There's a lot of partial stuff sitting around my craft room UFOs you know how that goes here I'm sewing it together and you can watch this like I said in any video or online I used the absolute most basic stitch and it has a name I don't know what the name is it starts with a P but you go Oh, and see, I'm trying to show you. That's why I'm holding it up really close for you. You go um, up through the middle. You do a figure eight. So in through the middle, out through the bottom, in through the top. And then if you watch, I'm going to come up right through the middle so that I have both of my uh, threads right there. If you wanted your threads to be on the outside for your finished project, maybe for my art journals or flow journals or messy fun things, I would start on the outside. Since this is an item that I sometimes take out at work, I noticed that when you pull out something really pretty in the middle of a meeting, it causes a distraction. So I put the strings on the inside and I tried to keep it pretty simple. You'll see at the end, it turns out a little distractingly cute. Now I'm taking off the paper clips. The paper clips were just to hold all the papers together while it was being made. Uh, you could, I could leave a couple of cute paper clips or make some decorative ones, that sort of thing. You'll notice uh, I'm fiddling with the strings. This is just embroidery floss. And I, if you've ever done any cross stitching, came up through the middle. So I'm gonna have to sort that out. So let me tell you a few things while I'm doing that. I'm just untangling is all I'm doing. The needle that I used was not in a package. It's very large. I would guess it's a darning needle maybe or something else like that because it's very large and it has a point. I also have a package up there of tapestry needles. That would be another example of what you could use and I thought those were the largest needles I was going to use or I had so I was going to use them. Just look around your house. When I show you videos, I don't want you to think you have to run out and buy everything. I have embroidery floss in a lot of colors. I found a needle that I had, a piece of scrapbook paper, and uh, junk paper. I did, I will admit, um, I didn't have an awl. A-W-L is how you say it. I think it's awl. I didn't have an awl. I couldn't find an ice pick. So that was a purchase, not specifically for this book, but for the many that I'm working on. So I admit it. And I got it at um, uh, Home Depot, I think. And it's made in the U.S. And it seems a little giant, but it was the one they had. There were some smaller ones online, but I, sometimes I don't have any patience. So you can see how cute it turned out. The string is on the inside. It would be adorable with it outside, too. I'll definitely make some with it on the outside. And then I'm just using my bone folder and flattening it out a little bit. You don't have to have a bone folder. Here's the other one, the one that I carried around all this year. It was from uh, Carpe Diem, and it was very thick, wonderful paper and a nice uh, cover. And I noticed that the edges were rounded, and that probably helps a little bit for carrying it around in your purse and battering it. So I decided to round the edges on this one. A wiser person probably would have rounded them before assembly. But one thing I like about doing it after is because it's put together and I'm doing a group of pages you'll see as I go through, it probably helps keep everything lined up a little. The idea of trim it after and then it'll all line up. 
The size of the cover was based solely on the fact that the interior pages were seven by eight when they were given to me. I just left about a quarter of an inch all the way around. You don't want your pages to be the exact same size as your cover because they won't be protected and it won't be as cute and it'll be obvious if you get things crooked. <laughs> and like I said, I probably will put some kind of liner on the inside just to cover up the various tapes and stuff that I have partially showing. And I'm just rounding the corners and touching it up with my scissors. Many corner rounders aren't perfect. Some are, but if they aren't, just take your scissors and get the little notch off. These would make fun stocking stuffers. They would make fun gifts for coworkers. And any kind of paper would work. I like lines because I'm super messy. So that's why I was excited about using the ledger paper. You could use blank paper. You could use watercolor paper, sketching paper. You could use solid cardstock. Any paper that folds in half will work. And if you already have smaller pieces cut, there's journal ideas for that too, where you use washi tape and connect them. I hope you like this. I'm gonna show you in just a second the finished product. So I put that washi tape across the front. That's either from like the dollar store or Joanne, very inexpensive, just a cheerful message, so I liked it. And then I put it across the front because the most crooked part was what I wanted to be the front because I wanted the number, the row numbers to go down the left of the page. Some are upside down. This is more of a junk journal, art journal style. That's why I don't care that the numbers are upside down. This might not be your style, but I hope you enjoyed the video and got some ideas for yourself and you're taking time to craft and relax. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.